just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. All right, this day in history took place yesterday, actually, October 9th, 2016. Got to go back to when Lock Her Up was the most divisive thing in our political conversation. Those times, just six years ago, seem almost quaint now. Trump's surprise victory in 2016 got a big boost from Ohio, where he went 51-43. In 2020, he won 53-45. Yet his hand-picked Senate candidate is... Well, in a toss-up right now, J.D. Vance only leads Tim Ryan by a point in the Real Clear Politics average. The two candidates are on stage right now in Cleveland for their first debate. They'll meet again on stage next week. Robert Sherman uh, in Ohio. Hi, Robert. Hey there, Leland, and good evening from the Buckeye State, which has been known for decades as arguably the consummate swing state here in our election cycle. Seems like things are a bit back to normal here, Leland, with this appearing to be a tight locked race between Tim Ryan and J.D. Vance. But you look at the polling data that's out there, of course, take it with a grain of salt. One thing that does seem to be clear, though, is that there are a lot of undecided voters who are still out there. We've met some of them this week. Some of them say they're just not sure who to vote for yet. Some of them say they're still pretty skeptical about both of the candidates. But one issue that continues to rise to the top, the economy, inflation, the cost of gas, the cost of groceries. And the two candidates both made it a point to make their case on that issue tonight. Take a listen. I believe we've gone in a fundamentally bad direction over the last couple of years. I think people deserve to go to the grocery store without it completely breaking the bank. Tim Ryan has voted with these policies 100% of the time. J.D. Vance has invested into companies in China. The problem we're having now with inflation is our supply chains all went to China. So two years ago, we saw a lot of energy for Donald Trump here in this state, but this go around not really the same situation, not really a lot of uh, vocal support or, you know, really emphasis on J.D. Vance or Tim Ryan necessarily. Most people here are coming out to the polls and voting either have one or two issues they really care about or they care about the balance of power in the United States Senate. Leland? Yeah, balance of power in the Senate is what we heard uh, consistently from voters in Georgia uh, as well. Robert Sherman in Ohio. Highlights from the debate tomorrow. Thank you. Tim Ryan in Ohio, Mark Kelly in Arizona are not the only, but they are perhaps the most vocal Democrats running away from President Biden. I'm guessing you're not inviting the president to join you here in the campaign trail anytime soon? <laughs> no, I am not. I've disagreed with Biden and I've agreed with Trump on trade and on China and on, you know, General Mattis and on these really important issues for the country. I didn't have my personal views of Donald Trump get in the way. I think that's what people want. But me, I stand up to the left when they want to defund the police, and I stand up to the right when they want a national abortion ban. And when Joe Biden gets it wrong, I call him out. We're still waiting to hear what he thinks exactly Joe Biden has gotten wrong. We'll get back to you if we find any of those clips. But it's part of a trend. Democrats appealing to the center while Republicans double down on turning out their base. Chris Hahn is here, host of the Aggressive Progressive podcast. All right, I... Uh, Boy, it's a bad look when you got to run away from your own president. Yeah, I think that's an old clip. I, I'm pretty sure that's what he was saying back in, like, June. I, I don't feel he's running away as much today now that Biden's numbers have rebounded somewhat. But appealing to the middle is something you do when you've shored up your base. If you are still campaigning to your base in October, you have real problems uh, on the horizon. And I think that's what I'm seeing right now, both in the data and in what they're actually doing in the field. Fair, fair enough. Uh, in October, if you're, if you're not able to, to move, move to the center, you do have issues. You, you think about, though, how Democratic candidates are out kicking their coverage, so to speak, or out kicking President Biden's coattails by double digits uh, in Georgia with Raphael Warnock, in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, uh, in Wisconsin. Are we to attribute that to candidate quality, especially on the Republican side, and lack of quality, or something else? I, look, I think some of Biden's poll numbers are bad because Democrats are not supporting him at the levels they should be supporting him, quite frankly. 
And what you're seeing in some of these other polls from these other candidates is Democrats are going to vote for Democrats. And if Joe Biden is the presidential nominee in 2024, they'll vote for him. All right. Uh, Mark Kelly's ad that we ran, when Joe Biden gets it wrong, I call him out. Uh, but Mark Kelly hasn't. He defended everything that he's done on the border and said that he's, he's been working hard on it. The border's a disaster. You and I can agree on that. It's an issue primarily in Arizona that voters really care about because it's local news there. Uh, how is it that you have Senate candidates saying they disagree with President Biden? If they don't actually deliver on that, does it work for voters in the center? Well, when you make a campaign ad, you assume people aren't going to read your record, right? Camp, you campaign and you tell people what you want them to know. And I'm sure Mark Kelly has disagreed with President Biden, whether it be in private or in other matters throughout his career. And I'm sure he tells him that. Mark Kelly is one of the bravest people on this planet. The man went to space for all. I mean, it's, he's an amazingly brave person. So I don't think anybody should be concerned about Mark Kelly telling President Biden how he really feels about anything. Uh, for whatever it's worth, uh, we checked the tape, uh, the Tim Ryan soundbite. He did say it back in June. He said it again uh, last week, uh, according, uh, according to I, our looks. Let me tell you, I've told you this before. I don't think he should be saying that. Because if he makes this an election about who's going to be worse for Biden, he will lose, even to a horrible candidate like J.D. Vance, who any you know MAGA Republican who read J.D. Vance's book would be shocked that he was Donald Trump's choice to be the candidate. It is, it is shocking that, at least in Senate races, right, candidate quality is really mattering. And I, and I yeah. wanted to talk to you a little bit about Georgia. We're going to be there on Friday night for the debate. I know you're going to be joining us uh, at times for that as well. Uh, Raphael Warnock's up three points over Herschel Walker, who has had perhaps the worst 10 days of any politician since uh, yeah. the grabber by the you-know-what tape for President Trump. And the news keeps getting worse for Herschel Walker. Um, if Herschel Walker wins, it will be why? Partisanship, pure partisanship. I don't think he's going to win, Leland. I think the couple of days he's had have not shown up in polling yet. They will show up in polling. The polls don't have to move a mile. They only need to move an inch, and they're going to move an inch. The man is not going to be a U.S. senator. It's hard to imagine anybody being excited to vote for Herschel Walker. Control of the Senate is a different thing. That's what Robert... That's it. Uh, the only reason. It's the only reason anybody is voting for Herschel Walker in Georgia. Even if you ask them, they tell you that. Yeah, it Dana, is, Dana, Dana, Lash, Dana Lash said it out loud, too, um, and we praised her for it. So, Chris, it's good to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you, too. Yeah, News Nation is the exclusive network home of the Georgia Senate debate this Friday, October 14th, 6 p.m. Eastern, debate night in America. I'll be in Savannah. Chris Cuomo comes in after the debate for analysis and reaction. We'll see you there. Tweet us some of your thoughts and questions. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.